So, dear colleagues, uh, Tatiana Yurevna, uh, I would like to be frank. And uh, uh, this is quite a philosophic uh, sort of uh, talk. It, it's been so difficult to prepare it, I must uh, admit this. But by the end of all this you know, preparation process, I suppose that I will come to like it. I will start with, uh, not with the breast cancer, but from a slightly different topic. Um, our life has actually uh, has been modified, actually. Uh, for example, you need just a note uh, in response to uh, whether you would like uh, to support this uh, lecture or not. And I suppose that this is going to be one of the most independent types of um, uh, just uh, support. Thank you very much, Pfizer, for supporting this uh, event, supporting this conference. Now, uh, let us come back to the uh, breast cancer. Uh, generally speaking, once when we were young, everything seemed to be very simple. And the breast cancer has always been uh, an example of some sort of positive uh, tumor in terms of the pr uh, prognosis and diagnostics uh, modalities. And uh, uh, maybe the hemogenic uh, type of uh, tumors were more positive in terms of treatment. But these were quite rare type of tumors. What actually uh, was the main uh, bulk of the um, malignancies in uh, malignant neoplasms in uh, adults. Uh, we usually uh, looked at it as something good. So time flew, and I suppose that everybody started asking questions. And uh, the very first uh, thing is uh, that the uh, breast cancer actually is very good if compared to other types of tumors. And uh, generally speaking, of course, we have quite good, uh, mm, quite good uh, screening. We have molecular targets, and we have quite simple, uh, simple surgery. It's not uh, something like you know removing it as an, as a, as, a, uh, as a fungus. Uh, they survive. They survive for long. This is quite a nice uh, uh, population of patients. And uh, generally speaking, there is no social stigma. Uh, and what do we actually see? Screening and early diagnostics. Uh, um, a lot of things uh, has uh, been developed, evolved, and a lot has been discussed about the simplicity and the, the diagnostic and the self-diagnostics in this tumor, how many uh, lectures were made on the advanced forms and uh, how we cherished a lot of hopes around the palpation and self-testing. I suppose that it's a good tumor in terms of, you know, localization because it localizes outwards. But if you look at the statistics of the advanced stages, which reflects the advanced forms, the very late diagnosed uh, forms, inadequately late, uh, and uh, which are related to the visual localization. Generally speaking, the figures, uh, they do not change. Uh, every fourth or every fifth uh, woman has a stage three at the time of detection. So generally speaking, it doesn't matter where the uh, tumor is localized. But if we uh, fail to negotiate the message about the attention towards uh, her uh, health, then the outward localization will not help us much in the early diagnostics. And uh, from the viewpoint of our influence over the screening modalities, and especially where the doctor can take part, unfortunately, despite all the um, uh, simplicity and the mammography, which, is, which has the vital place and plays the vital role in the uh, diagnostics uh, modality, uh, nonetheless, uh, the uh, Mm, diagnostics is uh, di uh, timely diagnostics is, is quite rare, and I suppose that this is the it lies within the uh, peculiar features of the uh, cancer itself because there is no pre-cancer stage, and there is no drastic success from the screening programs, just like in the cervical cancer, for instance. That is why, unfortunately, with the screening. Oh, it's a quite a simple screening. We have either we have missed shots. We either detect it too early and it's hyperdiagnostics, or it's too late. It's a small tumor, but it already managed to disseminate. So it's uh, 
something that we cannot forecast in terms of the metastatic potential. And uh, even the dogma about the early diagnostics is something that we can um, question nowadays. The hyperdiagnostics that I talked earlier about, this is the tumor detection, which for the rest uh, of the patient's life will not uh, result in a clinically significant problems. And if you judge by what our American uh, colleagues write, then from 30 to 50 percent of all the tumors are detected by the screening program with this very informative and simple screening, this is a hyperdiagnostics. That is why overall it's good uh, to have the early stage, but unfortunately it's quite bad that this particular type of disease is cannot be prognosed and cannot be foretold. And the early stage for some subtypes is um, too late, and for other subtypes is too early. That's why, despite its localization and uh, um, accessibility, the breast for preventative measures is still something we cannot catch. We do have all the positive sides of it, but if you look at the American graph, back in 1940, three diseases actually started from the same um, from the same um, uh, parameter. That was uh, uterine cancer and uh, cervical and breast cancer. But look how difficult the destiny is, how the uh, breast cancer behaves at the level of the population, and what is the success rate at other two in, within other two nosologists. There are good, actually, uh, there are good things to, to, to say as well. You can see that the mortality uh, rates in breast cancer go down, but I suppose they are mainly related to treatment, but not to prevention and screening. Here, I suppose we can be proud in saying that treatment looks quite good. It's quite a um, simple surgical approach, and we have huge, um, a huge treatment uh, sort of options for conservative treatment. We have monotherapy, even targeted therapy. We have huge armory in our hands. But indeed, in the uh, previous years, we have had a lot of positive, um, um, just uh, positive uh, shifts. Uh, first of all, the surgeons stopped being that aggressive in uh, terms of the local treatment of breast cancer. They stopped doing uh, complete mastectomy in, uh, without a need. Uh, there are no disabilitating uh, type of uh, surgeries nowadays, and uh, also our Mammologists started actually doing a reconstruction, and from this viewpoint, again, it's good enough because the surgeons actually they have their job, and the uh, our women also benefit from it. And uh, the surgery, of course, does not help us much in the um, advanced and disseminated forms. This is a slide from an um, ASCO. A forum, you can see negative outcomes of surgical. Uh, treatment of advanced and disseminated treatment. So the primary tumor uh, removal is not good here. Another uh, RCT doesn't show any advantages, any benefits in the overall and relapse-free survival in the local surgery in metastatic breast cancer. But there is something good that was said in the discussion, and I suppose that I will come to agree with that. The first thing to say that uh, everybody who deals with the local progression, uh, they know that it can be actually um, uh, that it can be uh, a torture to have 20 metastases in the liver when there is an out uh, from uh, progression from outwards. Most probably the primary uh, tumor should be removed then because the local progression will be curbed. And uh, uh, more to that, the Turkish study shows that. Uh, there, is, there was some of the, uh, some subgroup of um, patients. Uh, these are patients with a solitary bone metastasis, which again will open up surgery in a ligametastatic disease in uh, breast cancer. And pharmaco treatments or conservative treatments. I suppose that breast cancer has been the um, 
has been the mainstay is uh, the mainstay of the uh, pharmaco treatment, and the biggest number of RCTs were devoted to them. We are speaking about targeting, about individualization of uh, treatment, and uh, uh, about the fact that the breast cancer is a platform for the study of molecular subtypes. So, the molecular subtypes and the true uh, types, they are actually grow in number. They are different in terms of their uh, course and in terms of their prognosis. From the, u- the viewpoint of what we can, we really can use, this is immune, is the chemical um, classification, which is a surrogate. Uh, it actually describes uh, 4.5 uh, subtypes of breast cancer. And it's not just molecular subtypes. These are just something that we can uh, ground on our uh, choice of treatment. But again, here we should be asking ourselves whether anti-HER2 treatment should be provided to the patient or it is not needed. So from the viewpoint of individual approaches, uh, selection, and from the viewpoint of choosing which of the options uh, can be used, We cannot give any response at the moment because we don't have prognostic tools and instruments. Yes, 10 or 15 years ago, it was good. We had just two uh, tests per one uh, tumor. That was estrogen receptors and HER2. Now, uh, in two years, just look how the decision-making tree looks like in the targeted uh, treatment in non-small cell uh, lung cancer. Uh, just with, uh, it, it has been an outsider for quite long. It was either chemotherapy or symptomatic treatment. And now look how this tree looks like in the breast cancer, uh, which provides us to take decision in the metastatic breast cancer. The estrogen receptors and HER2, that's it. So the situation is changing to the better. It's good. We have new validated markers, and I suppose that the uh, breast cancer is uh, PDL1, it's BRCA, it's microsatellite instability, um, and TRK, but uh, these are quite rare markers. I suppose that we should admit that there are no drastic uh, success, there is no drastic success in the breast cancer while impacting these uh, targets. Uh, For instance, uh, pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy in uh, non uh, small cell uh, lung cancer. And what do we have? Atelizumab plus chemotherapy in um, uh, breast cancer. Look at the curves. Look at the uh, BRCA mutated um, ovarian cancer and look at the curves in the BRCA mutated breast cancer. The success is not there. And it's not the uh, the doctors that should be blamed, not the farmer that does quite a lot to actually develop something new. But it's the breast cancer. It's the uh, breast cancer that is poor in the uh, targets for targeted treatment. In fact, you can demonstrate it pretty well uh, that the most sensitive uh, tumors with the translocations It's um, sensitive tumors when we have uh, dotted mutation in uh, breast cancer. It's um, uh, absence of dotted mutation. It's the hyperexpression of the signal um, uh, pathway. And uh, yes, indeed, there are exceptions. For example, not very long ago, it... Uh, I read an article which actually made an impression on me uh, because it was all about the very rare, but at the same time, very aggressive and very uh, bad um, uh, type of breast cancer, which is uh, metaplastic. Uh, So they used the immune combination of immune drugs, and it resulted in the situation three out of 17. It's not mm, many, but nonetheless, in three patients, the control uh, over the disease was uh, two plus years. This is drastic change in their destiny. And or uh, an 
TRK inhibitors in the even rare uh, breast cancer secret secretory uh, breast cancer again with a very dramatic with drastic and quite long effect but once again I would like to stress it that it's just uh, uh, something which is a pilot project yes uh, has uh, two positive uh, so it's a good target uh, with a long effect of treatment, but unfortunately, there are quite a few. Even if you compare them to the uh, yesterday's outside of the non-small uh, cell uh, lung cancer, the breast cancer actually makes some uh, steps forward, but not as drastically as we would like it. And more to that, the most frequent subtype, which actually is uh, the biggest type um, of breast cancer, lumina type of cancers. It's uh, starting from the tamoxifen. For many, many years, it remained an absolutely uh, unreachable target. We invested a lot of efforts into it. We invested fulbistran, uh, aromatase inhibitors, everolimus, um, and uh, whatnot. But unfortunately, the overall survival came to a halt and never moved forward. So. In this subtype, there is certain restriction uh, in terms of survival, most uh, because whatever we do, the results never changed. And uh, now I suppose that this is the only slide that is devoted to the uh, uh, to the drugs that come from the company that actually. Uh, supported this presentation. Uh, even if they did not support, I would um, uh, show this slide nonetheless, simply because this is a huge success for the breast cancer patients. The very first and the most impressive um, CDK4 success, which actually was reaching the over two years of uh, progression-free survival. Nonetheless, we uh, were um, uh, there were certain doubts about the overall survival, and we started be already started believing that most probably the uh, treatment does not change the biology of lumina cancers. There are certain internal clocks, which whatever we do to them, uh, do to it, they actually would uh, start working, start alarm the alarm at a certain time. But thanks God, in uh, 2019. CDK inhibitors and valves and, what, uh, and the, all the others uh, gave us the uh, result, and we have an opportunity to improve the overall survival for this cohort of patients, which actually changed the paradigm of this cancer. And we started with an even bigger type of therapy. So I suppose that the uh, ASCO also uh, spoiled our success a little bit because uh, they show that everything that is good in metastatic cancer is good only in the early. And no adjuvant uh, treatment on the use of one of the CDK4-6 uh, inhibitors, that was ribocyclin, did not demonstrate neither the improvement in the objective response nor the pathomorphological changes. Uh, which were measured by um, the level of uh, BK67, uh, oh, KI67. Uh, uh, so uh, none of these curves actually showed the uh, advantage of CDK6 to neurodevant treatment. You will tell me, okay, good to know, good to have quite a settled paradigm. And we treat according to the tumor biology, we are quite advanced. And we uh, base our choice on the uh, state-of-the-art molecular medicine. So we do not do some uh, you know, foolish chemotherapy, but we do molecular targeted treatments. But there is evolution all around us. Everything changes. And I suppose that in terms of the prognosis, very soon breast cancer will actually change itself and it will change other areas of oncology. Because if you start thinking about it, then the con uh, concept of target therapy and chronic therapy, sometimes it happens because of uh, because we uh, cannot kill the disease. We uh, sort of uh, try to hold the progression because we cannot uh, get rid of the disease. Just imagine uh, 
if we had um, uh, this time of panacea, then uh, most probably triple negative or her positive will not matter. It's uh, just if you do BEP, for instance, uh, BP, then uh, generally speaking, it will succeed. The targeted therapy does by the blockade of activated signal pathways, which actually uh, provides us certain restrictions. Just a receptor is not um, enough. HER2 without hyperexpression, if it, uh, there is a receptor but it's not activated, it doesn't work. EFG, uh, EGFR or CKIT or ALK. Uh, without activated mutations will not be uh, important for us and the blockade um, um, block of the signal pathway actually in uh, without uh, progression uh, will not uh, work and um, the presence of a receptor is not enough this is a uh, fresh study uh, 2020 it's uh, here to low tms adamant treatment with or without trastuzumab Unfortunately, we can see that uh, if there are no signs of activation, if there is no fish positivity, then the presence of a receptor um, it will not allow us to forecast the um, uh, just the outcome of the uh, targeted treatment. But there is another class of drugs. Uh, which uh, has appeared, and we uh, associated it only with the tumors uh, with which we have the HER2 positive tumors. These are when the targeted uh, just uh, uh, drug also uh, is associated with the cy cytostatic. And you can see that in the group of HER2 positive uh, tumors. This is Catherine's study where it was used in the adjuvant. Uh, um, in, in the adjuvant treatment in patients uh, who did not reach the full regression, pathomorphological regression, at uh, the background of uh, uh, no adjuvant treatment. Why is it so interesting? Well, it is interesting uh, per se, but uh, uh, let's look at the winners. Who wins? In the ASCO slide, I, sh I saw the following curves. The lower one are the patients who after no adjuvant treatment, the anti-HER2 treatment, the level of HER2 expression in the residual uh, tissue uh, was uh, just decreased below the HER2 positivity. They continued treatment in the frameworks of the RC team. But look at the difference between this group and those who received or did not receive the uh, conjugated monoclonal antibody and uh, at those who had certain uh, results, the um, reduction to HER2 low. Look, it's 30% difference in survival. It's something that is unsurpassed for now. Now, what changed? Because there is a new class of conjugated monoclonal anti-HER2 antibodies, which is a breakthrough not only for breast cancer treatment. As a matter of fact, here, the cytostatic has been changed, and the principle of this bridge has been changed that uh, binds it to the monoclonal antibody. And the cytostatic is not actually accompanied intracellularly with the endocytosis, like uh, TDM, uh, TDM1, but it is released in the contact with the receptor because the enzymes are um, uh, sp um, just a split in the tumor uh, that's around the tumor. And it impacts not only the uh, cell with a HER2 re uh, receptor, but also the surrounding adjacent cells which are next to it. It's just a technological uh, change, but the uh, customary, uh, the conventional therapy is uh, changed drastically. So at the moment, it's uh, the um, HER2 positive classical one. And these are the patients who actually are on trastuzumab, uh, pertuzumab, and TDM1. You can see it's an avalanche. It's an avalanche of reduction. This is actually uh, line 33 of treatment. Everybody responded. But the most interesting comes later. These are the HER2 low when it's not activated. And you can see 
that depending on the number of receptors which are expressed in the cells, you can see that in uh, IC, um, uh, IHC the results are a bit uh, better. But nonetheless, all the patients with non-activated HER2 receptor present in the cell, they respond to the medication. So, more to that, I suppose that such principle does not ma- for such principle it doesn't matter uh, what is the receptor and uh, the localization of the cancer. Uh, what matters is the HER2 expression. So, the common thing is the lumina breast, breast cancer. It's the most um, common. It's 70 percent among women. If you look at the HER2 expression, not hyper expression, but hyper uh, expression, when if there is a receptor, it can turn out that there is a second, second common subtype. And uh, with all due respect, it's not targeted uh, therapy; it's targeted chemotherapy. The active ingredient is the cytostatic. And uh, it depends on the presence of the receptor. And there must be a target that should be determined before the onset of treatment. This is a targeted treatment. But this is targeted chemotherapy. Most probably, we shall not recognize the classification of breast cancer. There will be a triple negative uh, with expression of HER2. Luminal A, luminal B, with and with or without expression of HER2. Now, uh, actually, I'm again behind the schedule, and I would like to finish my presentation saying that we shall palpate something good in the uh, breast cancer that will also uh, have us a chance to extrapolate our experience to other types of cancers. Thank you.